women's building and we have a delightful gentleman here that is a broom maker. Sir, what is your name and where are you from? Oh, my name is uh, Tom Knox. Uh, my wife, uh, Jan, and I uh, make brooms. Uh, we got into this hobby sort of uh, uh, by chance. Uh, my wife's uh, uh, cousin's father uh, was a carpenter down in Ohio and uh, he did broom making in the winter when he uh, didn't have any carpenter work to do. They didn't have any children, so they wanted us to have the machine. So about 15 years ago, they gave us the machines. And uh, we took a broom apart and found out how to make them. And uh, so it sort of led us into this uh, hobby of broom making. OK, you're going to make a broom for us here, right? Well, I have a broom here, which is a, a short nail and hearth broom. The first stages are already done. Uh, the straw is put on in two layers uh, with wire to hold it security, uh, securely to the handle. And we do use uh, a variety of handles, uh, most of them being uh, uh, natural handles. And uh, what I'm going to do now is put on a, a layer of stems to finish off the top of the broom and to make it more decorative. This is a broom you would uh, hang by the fireplace to use to sweep up uh, ashes or uh, generally clean up around the fireplace or do some uh, small cleaning with a dustpan. So what I'm going to do now, I'm working at uh, what we call a tying table and on this reel below are my different twines and wires that I use and I feed those off onto the broom and uh, which uh, secure whatever material I'm using to the handle. Right now I'm using a, a nylon twine. This is wound around the reel. I'll attach it to the, uh, to the broom. I first put a knot in there and then I'll uh, tack it to the broom itself. I use uh, different size staples depending on the uh, size of the broom. The tool I'm using is a regular uh, broom maker's hammer. As you'll notice, it's narrow and uh, has a little head on one side and a blunt uh, tapered edge on the other. This tapered edge is used when putting the heavy stems on to pound them in as you uh, wind the cord of the wire on to draw it very tight. And it gets in narrow places and doesn't uh, interfere with your hands as you're working. So what I do, I keep tension on the, uh, the reel down below with my foot and uh, draw the cord tight. Now this nylon cord I can pull quite tightly without, uh, without it breaking. And I take these stems which have been cut off of the uh, broom corn stem and I place them under the string and I'll just uh, continue going around adding these on, being sure to keep uh, tension on the uh, cord to keep them from falling off. These uh, points uh, were formed when I cut them off the original stem and they uh, form sort of a decorative uh, scallop as they extend below the cord there. This will take a a few minutes to go all the way around. This is uh, quite different than a commercial broom in that it's, uh, it's serviceable as a broom, but it's also decorative and uh, adds a little uh, decor to your fireplace or wherever you use it. The stems are soaked in hot water uh, before I apply them. That makes them uh, pliable and uh, keeps them from breaking as I uh, tighten them down with a cord. And I will do some weaving up the handle, so they have to be pliable for that also. 
I placed them close enough together so that uh, none of the underside is showing. stems I'll wrap around about three rounds and then secure the twine so that it doesn't loosen up. Sometime we uh, come in contact with the wires below and it's a little hard to get the staple started. We have to go to a little wider staple here. That's it. And then I'll skip down to the next roll of wire there. Put another roll of twine to hold that tight to the uh, under straw. Test it there, I'll skip down to the handle, wrap the uh, cord around the handle once. Then slide the cord up uh, close to the uh, straw. Straighten the stems up. Then uh, draw it tight. That pulls it down around the uh, straw and makes a nice uh, transition there. Then I'll start the weaving. I'll put a put a small staple to hold that. Some of the handles are very hard and it's hard to drive a staple. Then I'll, I'll start uh, the weaving, which is just a simple basket weave. First I'll cut these off uh, approximately the same length and I won't have to uh, work with so much uh, left there that I won't use. It's just a simple basket weave. Just over and under. And just a repetitious uh, process till we get all the way to the end. This will take a few minutes uh, to get to the end. It's the real thing to always keep in mind in making brooms and applying the uh, materials is uh, you have to keep a steady tension on it or you'll uh, lose your material and uh, spoil the broom. This is uh, mostly decorative. It does uh, serve a purpose of holding the uh, the under straw tightly to the handle, so it does uh, 
those have that function anyway. Our handles, we gather some ourselves. Uh, others we buy from uh, people who cut them for us. Uh, some of them from North Carolina, some of them from Arkansas. We uh, cut some of our own of sassafras and uh, oh, aspen. Most anything uh, will make a good natural broom handle. Some people like them uh, straight. Uh, some of them prefer a, uh, a crooked handle for the, for the character. We make some with uh, turned straight handles uh, that are more like the uh, commercial brooms, just a, a common household broom. And here we have the finished product, is that correct? Yes, uh, the weaving has been finished. Uh, we ended off with uh, several wrappings of the cord. Uh, secure it with a staple on each side, then trim the ends off uh, so they're even. So there you have the uh, finished product with the leather uh, thong to hang it from a hanger. And uh, we always uh, insist that uh, people hang the broom, don't set it on the bristles, because it'll, uh, it'll ruin a broom and cause what they call a, a lazy broom. But that is the uh, finished hearth broom right there. Okay, well thank you very much. We appreciate you taking the time to show us how you make firms here. Well, you're welcome.